Israel has broken their peace treaty with Egypt and they could potentially go to war over it. But also, this is my first video summarizing all of the news that's happened last week. And this isn't a rare thing, I'm going to be doing this every week for quite a while. But the first and one of the most important pieces of news from the last week was Israel launching their invasion of Rafah. Last Tuesday on May the 7th, Israel launched their invasion of Rafah in southern Gaza. And in doing that, they seized control of the Egypt-Gaza border up to the Rafah crossing. Now, you may not know, but this is actually prohibited under the Camp David Accords. And those are a series of peace agreements that Israel and Egypt signed, saying that they basically won't go to war with each other. Now, in response to this, Egypt didn't say much, but they did release a statement on it. They said they condemn Israel seizing the border, and they see it as a dangerous situation that threatens millions of lives in Rafah. Except nowhere in their statement did they say they were going to retaliate, so it seems they probably won't. Now, on to the next point. On Thursday, the Slovakian and Prime Minister Robert Fico was shot and somebody tried to kill him. In fact, he was shot five different times in the chest, in the stomach, and even in the arm. Now, he was immediately airlifted to hospital where he straight away had an operation. And it appears that luckily he's going to be okay and both the hospital and the president say that. The hospital said that he's in stable condition and the president said that he should be okay in the long run. Now, the man who shot him was a 71-year-old left-wing activist who had a really strong support for Ukraine. And he said that he shot Fico because he didn't agree with the government's decisions. And Fico is more of a conservative leader and he doesn't support funding Ukraine. Now separately, many world leaders condemn this attack. Most of them put out statements on it. Except Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and the Serbian President Alexander Vucic will be visiting him in a hospital next week. Now back to the Middle East, last Sunday, Hezbollah in Lebanon targeted Israel with a drone and it ended up costing Israel $50 million in damage. In the afternoon, Hezbollah launched a $5,000 drone towards an Israeli Iron Dome air defense rocket launcher. Now, in order to defend against this cheap drone, Israel scrambled two F-16 fighter jets. Those fighter jets used their rockets and flares to try and intercept this Hezbollah drone. Now, the only issue is that that totally failed. The drone managed to get through and the Israeli air defense kicked in to try and intercept it. Now, almost all of Israel's air defenses were working at full pace to try and intercept it, except they all still failed. So in the end, the $5,000 Hezbollah drone managed to get through all of Israel's air defenses and still hit its target. And it successfully destroyed the Israeli Iron Dome air defense rocket launcher, which is worth over $50 million. Not to mention that Israel spent another million dollars trying to intercept the drone. So this was just a major embarrassment for Israel, to be honest. Except it's not as big as the loss they got hit with on Tuesday. On Tuesday, just two days after Hezbollah hit the Israeli Iron Dome air defense rocket launcher, Hezbollah also captured an Israeli spy balloon that was flying over Lebanon. Not only that, but it was a $200 million balloon and it's totally just been captured and Israel has now lost that. Israel was flying the balloon over southern Lebanon trying to collect intelligence. Hezbollah saw that and then they targeted the base that was being used to control this Israeli spy balloon. Hezbollah released footage of them flying a drone into this Israeli soldier's base who was controlling the balloon and then once he blew him up, the balloon then fell out of the sky and they then captured it. Now, not only is this a $200 million loss for Israel, it's also a massive loss for the Americans because the American intelligence technology that was on board that balloon is worth hundreds of millions, if not billions. And now that that balloon has been captured, it's likely that it's gonna be sent to Iran and it's gonna be replicated. At least Iran will have a lot more information on what type of technologies the Americans are using now. But if any updates come on that, I'll definitely make a video on it. Now, just a brief topic. On Friday, the Houthis in Yemen managed to shoot down another American MQ-9 Reaper drone. This makes it the third one that they've shot down now. Videos of the wreckage came out and then more videos came out of the people in Yemen had set fire to the wreckage and then started dancing around it. But with each of these drones costing at least $30 million, it's a pretty big loss for the Americans. Now finally, one of the biggest pieces of news that came out from last week. On Monday, India signed a 10-year deal with Iran to fund their biggest shipping port. And in doing this, it's gonna create a whole new global shipping line that doesn't even connect with the West once. For the last 150 years, the shipping lanes from Russia to India have all flown through Europe and through the Suez Canal. But these new shipping lanes will make it so that ships don't have to go through any of that, and they don't have to go past any Western countries. So this means that the West will no longer have any influence over the global trade. And even if they wanted to have influence over it, they wouldn't be able to. They wouldn't even be able to impose sanctions on any country's ships that they don't like. Now this shipping lane will start all the way from Moscow and it will head down on trains all the way to Iran's port in southern Iran. 
and then from Iran it will be sent from the Chabahar port to wherever it wants to go in the world but most likely India. Now the deal that India signed was that they're going to fund the building of this Chabahar port which is going to be Iran's biggest shipping port. Now in response to this America has threatened sanctions on India but it doesn't seem like India is really that bothered. It's likely that India is still going to go ahead with it but it's expected to be completed just within the next 12 months. So within that time frame, you could see a lot happening throughout the world with the global trade and people trying to get control of that. But it seems as an overall, things aren't going very well for the West. Except I do have one last thing, which is quite important, at least for me. I've now been totally demonetized across all platforms. And that means that I can't make any money from any of these videos, even though I put hours into it every day. So that means that I've now got to be asking for your help. So if you want to help fund these videos and you want to make it so that I'm able to make these videos, then you can go to the link in the description and you can join my Patreon. And that's gonna help fund me so that I can put all the time into researching and making these videos so that I can keep posting them for you. But if you can't afford it, that's totally fine. If you subscribe, I am just as grateful. And for anyone that's interested, the sources for all six of these pieces of news will be in the description, along with the links to all of my other socials, which you can probably see on screen now. Now, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next week at the same time.